Signalling is something that, as modellers, it's been very difficult up till now to actually get some decent working signalling, unless you're very, very good at either scratch building or building kits. A big hello to you. I hope I found you well. I'm Jennifer Kirk. Welcome you up here to We're Yard. And today we're going to be taking a look at a range of signal products that come from TrainTech, which is part of GageMaster. Now they very kindly sent over a number of these signals for me to take a good close look at and to have a little bit of a project on fitting them to Weiryard to see how well they perform. Now it's quite an extensive range of signals that vary through two, three, four aspects as well as directional feathers for any of the signals that you might want to use in a junction environment with the feathers denoting which direction the tracks are set at the junction. Now we've seen signals before that you can switch remotely but these have all tended to be purely analog signals and what differs with the train tech range is that what we've actually got is a signal that you can use in both a DC and DCC environment remarkably easily. Moreover, it doesn't necessarily need acres and acres of wiring to set these up. In fact, on DCC you can even power them entirely from the track and leave them be if you want them to work just on their own because they've got a little sensor that detects the passage of a train and works through the changing sequence uh, just automatically. They've also got an innovative function whereby you can daisy chain the signals together using a control wire that is supplied in the kit. And in this form you can have block signalling which uh, all of the different signals actually work in unison. So as a train passes down the block so the aspects are all shown correctly in accordance with the passage of the train. If you're using these signals on DCC, they also have a handy little function that allows you to assign an accessory address to them. And this allows you to either set them to automatic running or set them to just show a red aspect. And this is particularly useful if you're going to be using them on a bi-directional line, which I am in this video, so that you can set them to all stay at red regardless of the passage of the train if you're running that train in the opposite direction to which the signals are set up for. So today what I'm going to be doing is doing a full review and install of these products and seeing just how easy they are to add to an existing layout. And I'm also going to investigate that block signalling. I'm really intrigued by this and certainly signalling is something that as modellers it's been very difficult up till now to actually get some decent working signalling unless you're very very good at either scratch building or building kits. And this is an ideal opportunity to integrate the signalling so that you as a user don't actually have to be a genius at signalling control. So, Come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts, with the full range available to show and buy at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rocar Prototype Models, where detail, accuracy, and value for money go hand in hand. With their debut model of safe pack auto racks wowing model railroaders alike, now is your chance to order these in road names and configurations to accurately reproduce auto rack workings from 1974 to the present day on your model railroad. Order today from rocamodels.com and see the full range for yourself. Well I'm really interested to see these signals in action and just have a really good play with them. Is one of the things that I found on the layout up here on Weir Yard is that the more I get into the DCC side of things, the more interested and actually confident I am at dealing with some of the add-ons and signalling is very much in this area. And I want to see just how easy these are to install and just how effective they are working in a layout environment. So come with me and let's have ourselves a little project to uh, investigate and use these train tech colour light signals. Oh! <laughs> 
TrainTech have very kindly sent over a number of their SS3 signals, and this is a really innovative range. Now, we've seen on the market these colour light style signals before, but invariably they've all been very much of a previous era where you've got to wire them in, lots of fiddly wires, you need switching, you need a power source, and these do away with all of that. And the more I've read about these, the more interested that I've got. Now they've actually sent me three of these to enable me to do the review. And I've got one here in the packaging. If it looks a little bit disheveled, that's simply because I've already opened it up to take a look through the uh, uh, manual that's inside. As you can see here, they're DC and DCC compatible, and they've got a lot of really, really neat features to really help the modeler make full use of these without having to get their head around some actually quite complex wiring. Inside here, we've got the most important bits, the signal. There's also some detailing for adding ladders and some additional pieces at the top to make this up into really quite a detailed signal kit. There's also included a length of wire, and this is for daisy chaining this signal with others to allow them to all change in unison with each other. And it's a really, really innovative feature, but we're gonna delve into that a little bit later in the video. We've also got a full set of printed manual here, which gives you all the information that you need. All of this is also available online, so as a really handy reference, you can just look it up and read through on something like a smartphone or a computer. But for those of you that uh, prefer to have the paper copy, it's all here and very comprehensive in the packaging. When I've been reading in the manual about these, I've become more and more impressed by what I've been reading. You can power them both through DC using a smoothed 12 volt supply, or if you want really truly easy wiring, you can do them on DCC. And we've got these prongs that stick out of the side and you can see the metal pads that line up with the rails. It will literally just leach whatever power it needs directly from the rails with no other wiring required. And that is actually pretty impressive. If you're wanting to retrofit these to an existing layout or use it on DC, there's just some dotted lines there. You just cut off these prongs and then you can wire the power in just to these two metal rings and that will provide all the power that the signal needs. It principally works using this little sensor here. And as a train goes past, this detects its passage and changes the aspects on the signal automatically. And in fact, straight out of the box, it will just work doing that. It also has a couple of other really innovative features. If you add in an MS1 switch, which TrainTech have also sent over, that wires in to the center of these three terminal blocks here. And that allows you to manually trigger the signal. But its real party trick is if you want a number of these on a line to all work in series. And rather than going through some quite complicated switching, what you can actually do is make full use of this additional wire that comes included in it. And you can daisy chain these signals together using the outer terminals on this block. The way that you wire it in dictates how the signal reacts in relationship to the other signals. And essentially, if you wire to the rearmost block, the signal thinks that it is the first in a series to the next one. You can wire back to a previous signal, and at that point, this signal knows that it has a signal before it, and the aspects will automatically change to all match up with each other. Later in this video, I will show you exactly how to get this feature working. You can also program it on your DCC accessory bus, and we've just got two terminals here, which once it's powered up, we just short out across these briefly, the signal will start flashing across all of its different lights and it's then in the learn mode and we just literally just send an accessory signal to the accessory number that we want the signal to be on and it will automatically learn that and can then be triggered from your DCC handset. Again, I'll show you exactly how to do this later in the video. 
The detailing pack in the kit is comprehensive to give you everything that you need to build this up into a really, really nice model signal. Here is one that I've already done and you can see we've got the ladder, the safety rails at the top, we've got an identification plate, which we've got a number of different numbers that we can cut out and attach to the signal and it actually recommends that you might find it useful to put the number that corresponds with the accessory address that the signal has been placed on if you're using DCC. We've got a representation of the phone box which would be there for a driver to be able to contact the signalman and I've actually given this a coat of paint with Humbrol number 34 which is a matte white and Humbrol number 33 which is a matte black just to dull down some of the shininess of the plastic. What I also find quite useful is to tin these metal plates here for attaching to the track if you're going to use DCC. The solder is quite soft and it will deform as you push this in and provide a reasonably good contact without the need to directly solder it to the track, though you can improve its longevity just by applying a bit of heat and soldering it to the underside of the rail. These prongs can then be hidden with ballast, but just make sure that you don't get any wet glue into either the sensor or these terminal blocks, or it may affect the working of the signal. Fitting the signal to the track couldn't be easier. It's just simply a case of pushing it in, in the webbing, and it will automatically fit Pico, DCC Concepts Legacy, and a whole host of other track makes. I've got the three signals now attached to this length of track, and these are just push fit. So these are perfect if you're building a layout from scratch on DCC. Again, if you're going for a DC install, just follow the instructions for wiring the power supply in. But once they're next to the track, the sensors will work just the same. I'm going to now just run a wagon along this piece of track. As it reaches the first signal, that changes to red. Second signal to red. Third signal to red. As we wait, after a certain length of time, you see the first signal now go to amber, and then the second signal. The first signal has reached green as the final signal then changes. If you've got the signals working in isolation, this is perfect. This is all you need to do. You're up and running. But if you want to have a series of these signals on a track and you want them to work together in unison, so there's no problems with signals showing aspects that don't quite match with what the others are doing, then that's where the wire that comes with these comes in. With all of the signals now temporarily wired together, I can show you the effect. First signal to red, train passes the next one to red, final one to red, and you can see that the amber and green aspects are now linked together so that the signals all change as one series. This can also help alleviate any issues whereby signals might show conflicting aspects. These wires can be cut to length and just hidden away underneath the ballast. It's actually quite interesting to watch these. I'm really enjoying just triggering the signals and watching them automatically go through their cycle. And for most users, this is actually pretty much all you're going to need to do. For DCC users, there's also the ability to assign them an accessory address. And you do that by just bridging these two terminals whilst the signal is powered up and that puts it into a learning mode. You'll know when it's in the learning mode because it will cycle through all of the different aspects automatically. And you can see there the signal is now in learning mode and by selecting the accessory number that we want and then choosing to set that accessory and send the command on the bus the light stop flashing and this signal will now respond to the accessory number that we assigned it. When you change it, it will cycle between red and green. When the signal is on red, it will stay on red indefinitely, will not cycle through the different aspects 
and will not respond to the sensor. By setting it to go the other way, the aspect will turn to green and the signal will now respond to the sensor. When it comes to fitting the signals to your layout, obviously it's a lot easier if you're at the building stage of your layout and don't have any of the ballast in, but it's not too difficult to remove some of the ballast to actually just slide these in as is, or if you prefer, or if you're on DC, you can wire the power direct to the power points just there, the uh, two circles that you see there and there. But I'm going to have a go at fixing them in as is and the main reason for this is it just cuts down a lot on wiring. Uh, essentially the only thing that I'm going to need to do is if I want to link multiple signals together I'm going to wire the single core back to this triple terminal. Now you can just plug it in on top but if you want to avoid having a, a little hump of wire on the top of your layout which can't easily be hidden by things like ballast then it's quite simple to just solder the wire to the underside to the appropriate pin and then you can have a hole through the baseboard just drill that through and that wire is then fed uh, really unobtrusively out of the way and you won't see it above the signal above ground level. This is the area that I've chosen and I'm going to make sure that the power is off uh, and that is because we don't want to create any shorts either with tools bridging the track or indeed when we plug in the signal with any kind of a bridging going on especially to the terminals on the little detector there which would just fry the brains of the signal we really don't want that. So just looking along here, I'm just going to make sure that underneath, I'm just feeling away underneath, we haven't got any uh, obstructions in the way, that's good. So uh, when I do drill a hole through for the wires, uh, we're not going to get any problems with that. Once I've decided uh, pretty much which sleepers I want this to be underneath, I'm just going to scrape the ballast with a screwdriver just marking out where I'm going to be removing the ballast. Uh, I'm just going to also maybe mark out around the back there a little bit as well. Although with the ballast uh, shoulder there just heading down, I'm not too bothered about anything from the grass onwards. And just to double check, it's these two that we're going to be removing. So with an old uh, flathead type jeweler's screwdriver, it's really easy to just chisel some of this ballast out and very, very quickly remove this down to uh, the baseboard level that we want so that we can uh, have a nice clear run for the signal to go into place. So I'm going to get on with doing that. The next area we need to pay attention to, and with a very, very small uh, jeweler's screwdriver, this is a, a nice old one, but it's got a very small flat head, and this allows us to just push out any ballast that may have blocked up the webbing. And on this Pico Code 100 track, this is essential because this is where we're going to slide the signal through. And if you need to, just use a nice soft brush to get any of the bits out of the way. What I'm also going to do is just trim this side of the signal. The reason for this is that we don't actually need that and it just makes it that little bit easier setting all of this up. Now just uh, trim that off with a pair of track cutters and then we're going to do a test fit just gently pushing the uh, tongues underneath the track and at this point you'll be able to just figure out if you need to remove any more material and it feels like whilst that side's going in nicely we've just got a stubborn spot underneath this rail something jammed in there so I'm gonna just make sure that we get everything out that could possibly be bunging up that little bit underneath the rail. We're going to test that again. Again, that goes in quite nicely. 
It feels like it's getting in underneath there. Don't force it. If it's not going in, then there's a reason for it not going in. And again, I can just see it's a little bit glue and ballast that is jamming up underneath the rail. And there, just a little bit of work and we've got the signal fitting underneath the track really, really nicely. So we know that that's going to fit and now we can just work out where we're going to drill a hole to allow the wires to go through and then I'll solder the wires just to the underside of the appropriate terminals. I'm going to only wire this back to one of the other signals and I'm also going to solder a little dropper as well to the other terminal here. I'm not going to be using that but it makes sense if I change my mind in the future it just makes it a lot easier to have just a little dropper pre-wired in if I then decide to wire this on to another signal in sequence. With the signal now in place, quite happy, we've got the wires fed through and that hidden hole, they're pulled through underneath. Signal seems fairly happy where it is and you don't have to worry about gluing this down because quite simply, once it's soldered in place, it's going to stay put and you're just making potential work for yourself otherwise. So I've got some flux on this brush. Uh, I'm just going to put some flux on these pre-tinned tabs on the tongues. If you remember when I did the test run on these I pre-tinned them and that just made them work better. So with the flux now on those tabs I'm going to melt a little bit of solder onto there. There might just be a little bit of an issue with the fact that the rails were pre-painted that just means that I might just have to work a little bit to get the solder to take. And again with the other one as well. They're all soldered up and the power turned on. The green lights come up, so I'm just going to test it with the finger. Don't touch it, just hover it over, it changes to red. And then we're looking for that yellow aspect, there it is. And finally the green aspect. So now that I'm happy that this is all working and you can see there it reacting as I put my finger over, we've got the wire underneath, you just see it here. I'm going to run this now to the next signal which I'm going to install and then we can move on and get the entire system up and running. Repeating the process, I have this signal now in place further down the line. I've pre-wired the uh, connection between the two and what that means is that when this signal is set to red, simply by hovering a finger over the sensor, the previous signal to which it is wired now changes to yellow automatically. As the signal in front of it clears, it goes back to green. And in this way you can wire up a whole series of these signals to be able to have block signalling that just works as the trains pass by without needing any real input from you, the user. What I'm going to do now is run a train between these two signals that have been connected together. This gives a great example of how the block sections work. As the train passes the first signal, it just changes to red as you would expect. And if the signal were wired on its own without a connection to any other signals, it would then wait until the last wagon passes and cycle through the amber and then the green. But because it's wired to the next signal in the block, it waits on red until that train triggers the next signal. That signal turns to red and then as the train completes its journey past it, only then does this first signal cycle to amber and then on to green. If you connect extra signals ahead of that second signal, then that too would cause the previous signals to cycle in turn to match each other's aspects. If you want to, you can also connect them all back in a ring so that the last signal in the series 
feeds back to the first signal and your entire loop will have block sections that react to the passage of the train prototypically. Once you're happy that everything is working, it's a really easy job to just disguise where you've put the prongs underneath the track. For this, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm just going to use a little bit of PVA and avoid getting any of this onto the sensor. Just down the sides there, just putting a little bit in where I'm going to stick some vegetation and I'm going to leave the learning contacts on the back of the signal free in case, for whatever reason, I might need to reprogram it at any point. Using some of the Woodland Scenics bushes, I've got here some olive green and also some dark green, just to give a little bit of variety. I'm just going to push some small bits of this into place around the signal. These will just disguise that it's set on the edge of the embankment. So I've got some dark green there. I'm going to mix in a little bit of olive green. And this is a great opportunity to play about, but just be really careful. You don't want to get any glue or paint or anything like that onto the sensor on the signal. I'm also going to leave the uh, wiring points clear just there. And the reason for this is just in case I should ever need to wire anything in in the future. It's probably as well to forego having it all covered up and neat and uh, covered in ballast just in case. And then when it comes to the ballast, I've got some Woodland Scenics fine ballast. And with this, I only want a very small amount just to cover those prongs. So I'm actually using the handle of a set of tweezers just to put the tiniest, tiniest of amounts on top of that glue. And this is really just about a subtle way of hiding those, not wanting to completely bury them. And when this dries, it's then really, really easy to disguise this using something like a black wash, just to blend the different ballasts into each other. And this is a really good trick for any scenic work involving ballasting. If you want to blend the different areas together, simply get yourself a small tin of Humbrol enamel is what I use, but uh, you can actually use any black paint pretty much that's oil based. And uh, all we're going to do is just uh, have a little stir in there. This is one of the newer uh, matte 33 tins, although I find it dries more of a satiny colour. And then it's just simply a case of get some of that down. And then I've got some uh, dirty brush cleaning fluid in here. And I'm just going to get some of that on the brush and just start to move it around. What we're actually doing is making a dirty wash that we can then feather into the rest of the ballast. And this is a great use for the older brush cleaning fluid. I never throw it away, it always gets used for washes. If you need a little bit more, just add a little bit more on the brush. And one of the things I will say about this, make sure you don't get any on that sensor. So just keep well away from that area. You can see on this install, I've just left that well alone. And that's really the best policy to avoid any risk of damaging your signal and stopping it from working. I just want uh, a little bit more of this black. I'm going to paint that in over here. That PVA glue that I used has completely dried, which is what you want. You don't want to be doing this when the PVA is still wet. Otherwise, all that will happen is you'll end up making a horrible paste that sticks to the brush. You'll ruin the brush. You'll ruin your tin of paint and you won't actually end up with the effect that you want. So I'm just going to continue blending. And this is how you can just make sure that your new ballast feathers in to the old. It's just a little bit there. I'm going to just put a little bit of black onto there, a little bit more into there, a little bit more into there and just wash that back. And it's feathered that in quite well. 
I've really enjoyed installing these signals and I'd like to thank TrainTech again for giving me the opportunity to do a review and install. I found the instructions to be really quite straightforward and it gives you a lot of options as a modeler to either use them on their own and just let them do their thing or wire them into a more complex block signaling regime and with the addition of relays it's even possible for them to integrate the control of the trains with these signals. The DCC control aspect is useful and certainly if you have a bi-directional line this is essential to be able to set all the signals to stay on red when the train is running in the opposite direction and certainly on Weir Yard on the bi-directional line that they've been installed to I find this really a useful feature and if you set all of the signals on that line to the same DCC accessory address then you can turn them all on and off in unison in addition, if you want them interlocked with, say, a point, then it's really easy to set up their DCC address to be identical to the point, and then they will always change to match what route is set by the points. Overall, it's a remarkably simple system to get a great and as complex as you like result. The signals too are really really good scenic features and I really like the little fun project to assemble the detailing parts with the ladder and the safety rails and it really made a really quite attractive signal to add to any layout. With DC operations supported as well, DC modelers are not left out. Overall this signal set from a train tech really does get my thumbs up and I'll certainly be looking at more of the range in the future as I think that these are a welcome addition to any layout set from the early days of colour light signals right through to the present day. I have to say I've really enjoyed today's little project video and a big big thank you to Train Tech for giving me the opportunity to have a good play about with their range of colour light signals. We do have some affiliate links down below which take you to where you can find these and the rest of the train tech range to buy. But overall, I found them to be a really well-made product. I particularly like the instructions that made setting them up, whether you're a DC or DCC user, whether you want to use them singly or as part of a block signaling regime, remarkably easy and there was no questions left to be answered after reading through those instructions for me and I went ahead I installed them and I got great results first time round. Now if you're building a layout from scratch it's really really easy to just add these in from the start before you do any of the ballasting and as long as you make sure that you don't get anything onto that sensor then it's going to work just fine. Now DC users are not left out of course and with the smooth 12 volt power supply you can get these up and running and still enjoy not just that automatic switching as a train goes past but also setting them up as block signalling that all still works perfectly well. You can also manually switch these using a remote switch and these are also available in the train tech range. But uh, I'd love to know what you thought about these. Did you enjoy the little project video? And uh, is this something maybe that you're going to be looking into for your layout? Indeed, I'd also love to hear from you if you've already tried installing these train tech signals on your layout and would love to hear how you got on with them and what your thoughts were. Please like, share and subscribe and also check out our full merch store in the description box down below. We've got a link to that merch store where you can pick up all of the channel merchandise. Please also consider checking us out over on Patreon to help support the channel and indeed you can also become a channel member and both of these routes give you early access to the Friday video with additional perks available either in the chat of the Monday Club every single Monday or indeed on Patreon with multiple tiers of rewards. So do check it out and your help is always greatly appreciated. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. And until then, happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic 
Makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. Additional support comes from Rocar Prototype Models, where detail, accuracy and value for money go hand in hand. With their debut model of Safepack Auto Racks wowing model railroaders alike, now is your chance to order these in road names and configurations to accurately reproduce auto rack workings from 1974 to the present day on your model railroad. Order today from rocamodels.com and see the full range for yourself. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, and James Beckett. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.